Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillah. Everyone is in good condition, so we can uh, run our class today on time. We'll start uh, immediately while waiting for others to join the uh, Zoom. If you remember uh, what we discussed in the last lesson, in the last meeting, about the characteristic of an experiment, can you tell me one, one of the feature or characteristic of an experiment? We will easily identify that that research is an experiment because it has uh, a manipulated independent variable, what we call treatment or a program, for example, program, or we call it treatment. So if, if your research has a treatment, meaning that you are doing something to the group that you are uh, dealing with, your sample, that means that you are doing an experiment. Okay. So remember that that whenever you are uh, treating you are treating the, the groups, then you are doing an experiment. But then now we are going to discuss about the different types of uh, experimental design. Okay. Here are the type of experiment that you may uh, want to conduct. So remember that we have a treatment. The, the independent variable is manipulated by the researcher, and that is the major characteristic of an experiment. Now we'd like to see uh, what is the design of our experiment. Take a look at this. Uh, first, of all, first of all, we will uh, identify how we select the uh, sample, the subject or the individual. If the sample is random uh, selection and assignment. If you remember, there are two types of uh, randomization. First one is the random selection, meaning that you random select from the population to get the uh, size of the sample that you want, the number of individuals that you want. So randomly selected individual from the group, we call it random selection. And then after getting the number of students that uh, the number of individuals that you want to be in your sample, then you assign them to group, group one and group two. But you do it randomly. We call it random assignment. So uh, you have two types of randomization, selection and assignment. When you have assigned the students into the group, group one and group two, and then once again, you assign which group is going to get what? For example, you try to uh, to have an independent variable about the teaching method and method A and method B. And then you have to randomly assign which group it go, is going to have method A. So you, you what is, you randomly, uh, you lot the group, method A and method B, and then say, okay, uh, depending on the lots, then you can, uh, uh, assign the group. The group A will get uh, method B and group B will get met method A. That is what we call the random as assignment. <clears throat> now, if you do that, in the, if you have a random assignment, that means that you have a randomized or true experiment. Usually we call it true, true uh, experiment. <clears throat> if not, for example, uh, you have uh, you have selected two groups, but then uh, the individual in the group has been there. You do not randomly select individual into the group. You have class A, class B, class B, and uh, other classes that you have selected. That means that it is not a random selection. Uh, it is not a random selection and not random assignment because the students in the class has been assigned by the school, by the, the teacher, for example. So you don't have any random assignment. So that means it is not a true experiment. 
if there is no random assignment. And then in a non-true experiment, we have two types of design. If you have a control group or multiple measures, for example, you have a experimental group and control group, that means that if, if yes, then you have a quasi-experiment. If no, that means it's non-experiment. Usually we call it pre-experimental design, pre-experimental design. So you have three types of design when you are dealing with an experiment. Now let's start with the first one. <clears throat> so this, these are the type of experimental design, pre-experimental design, meaning that there is no control group and experimental design, meaning through experiment, you have a random assignment and random selection. Quasi experimental design, if there is no random assignment uh, in the process of getting the group that you are going to deal with. Now we have, uh, we have to discuss the design for each. Let's start with the pre-experimental design. Remember that sometimes the, the term pre-experimental design, this one, they call it non-experiment. Actually, this is an experiment, but, uh, an experiment, but the, we don't have any uh, control over the selection and the assignment of the students into the group. So they call it non-experiment. Uh, in to be consistent with the book, then we use the pre-experimental design. And then we have the true experiment, experimental design here. That means that the group are randomly assigned into the group and also the group has uh, randomly assigned to the method or the, to the treatment. And quasi experiment, uh, when we don't have any uh, random assignment and random selection, but we have control group. So let's start with uh, this, this design. So our assumption when we do experiment is something like this. This is a kind of premise. If X, then Y. X is the independent variable. Y is the dependent variable. So when we state this uh, rule, it means that if the program is given, then the outcome occurs. Okay. So if there is a treatment X, then the Y will be occurring. occurring. So that is the uh, premise of this experiment. Uh, in, in other way around, if there is no X, then there is no Y. So if the program is given, then the outcome occurs. And if the, pro the program is not given, then the outcome does not occur. So in the course of the uh, for example, if you are given uh, method A, then the result will be Y. If you don't give the uh, method A, then uh, Y will not occur. So that is basically the assumption. Now let's see uh, the type of design that we have discussed just now. Uh, first of all, let's see the symbols. So the symbols here is, uh, should be uh, remember well, remember this. R, the symbol R mean randomization. So if there is an R in front of these symbols, that means that this is a true experiment, an indication that the subject is randomly selected and randomly assigned to the group. And the group is randomly assigned to the treatment. So R is the symbol of true experiment. And then O, O is the observation. Uh, the observation meaning that Y, the, the Y that you measure, and then you have the O. Take a look at this O1. This is the type, for example, it's a test. If you have a vocabulary test, O1 vocabulary test. And in the post test here, it's also O1, meaning that the same test. But then if there is a symbol two here, that means that you have some additional, which is different from O1. So O1, O1, meaning that the same test, but then you have some kind of addition, some kind of additional uh, items to the test, and then you add the subscript of two. So O1, comma two. 
Okay, so that's the symbol. Uh, X means treatment. So X means treatment. Sometimes in the control group, in the control group, we do not put any symbol. In some cases, you may put symbols uh, over here, X1 and X2. <coughs> X1 means method A and X2 means method B. If there is no uh, symbol here, the treatment is there, but actually uh, they usually call it placebo. Placebo uh, is supposed to be uh, or, uh, what is a conventional. Usually the student compare the new method and the conventional method. So the control group has already been teaching the same way all the time. And then uh, we don't need to put the symbol here, the conventional way. But if you want to put it, then uh, you have to have a subscript one and two, X1 and X2. Meaning that S1 is method A and XB is method B. So this is the, uh, the way that we read these symbols. Okay, let's see. Uh, once again, we all mean by placebo. So this, this placebo, there's no symbol at all. Meaning that actually uh, we deceive. We deceive the group that we actually give them treatment, but actually we do not treat them. So they, they are receiving the same way of uh, instruction, for example, regularly. So we don't need the symbol there. Uh, originally, placebo means that uh, the treatment is uh, just like the, the X1, looks like S1, but then actually it is not X1. Uh, coming from uh, pharmacy. Yeah. So in the beginning, this type of experiment is done in pharmacological uh, science discipline. Uh, for example, uh, you have a new uh, medicine for headache. You have a tablet, for example. So you design the tablets. Uh, it contains all the substance that is needed to cure the headache. And then on the other hand, for the control group, you have a very similar tablet, but it doesn't contain anything. It's just a flower, okay? It's just a flower. And then you uh, ask the subjects who have headaches, and then you divide them into two groups, the experimental group and the control group. The experimental group will have the real tablets, and the control group will have the fake tablets. Uh, looks very similar to the real tablet, but it doesn't contain any uh, uh, chemical substance at all. It contains only a kind of flower, but it looks like very similar and identical to the one, and the subject uh, does not know that it is a real or fake tablet. And that's what you call the uh, treatment as placebo. Yeah. And then they, uh, what is the, take the medicine and then they measure the effect. And sometimes the placebo effect is there. The people, the subject who have headache and take the fake tablet, uh, the placebo, uh, they also, uh, what is, relief from their headache. So their headache is cured, even though it is not the real tablet. Uh, they call it the placebo effect meaning that uh, actually there is a kind of suggestive effect that uh, they think that they take the medicine and then finally they, uh, what is, uh, their headache is uh, fade away, okay, it's cured. Okay, that's the meaning of placebo. So once again, remember the symbol, R meaning randomization, indicating that this design is true experiment O is observation or the test or, or the instrument that you use to measure the variable. And then X is the treatment. While if there is no symbol over the control group, that means that it's a kind of placebo. Okay, let's see what we have next. So different type of design. So the first one is the true experiment. There is a randomization process here. And then uh, there is now pre-test and then treatment and then post-test. 
So this is a true experiment that they call it a post-test only randomized experiment. There's no true experiment. So they, they randomize the subject in the group and then the group is also randomized to the treatment, which one is going to have the X and the treatment and who is going to have the placebo. And then the, uh, there is only a post-test. Uh, uh, post Post-test is to measure the effect of the treatment after uh, giving the treatment, after administering the treatment. So here is a uh, true experiment. And the next one is causal advice, quasi experiment. The symbol is N, and it, it is not uh, randomized, but this is some uh, N. The symbol N indicating the, uh, indicating the uh, design as a quasi experiment. Or if there is nothing at all, if there is nothing, nothing at all, it means that it is a pre-experimental design. A quasi-experiment always has a control group, so that there are always two groups or more. So there, here is the experimental group, and the other one is a control group. Uh, there is a pre-test and post-test. If it looks like this, that means that they have the same test. Okay? The O and O in the pre-test and the post-test is the same. O I mean by the same is uh, quite tricky. It is not uh, something which is all the sentences and the options are the same, but the test uh, has the same, has the same uh, difficulty level, measure the same uh, object competence and so forth. So we call it the same. Okay. So remember that quasi-experiment always has two groups, one experimental group and the other is control group. Uh, the, indica the indication of quasi is that the subject is not randomized into the group and the group is not randomized. Uh, uh, the groups are not assigned randomly to the treatment. And then the last one is the non-experiment uh, design, or we call it pre-experimental design. There is no symbol at all, meaning that this is only uh, post-test only uh, treatment, post-test only design. Uh, usually, usually they call it uh, one-shot case study. So here you have one group and then you come to that group and you teach them, for example, and then you measure the result of your treatment. So here is what we call the one-shot case study belonging to uh, non-experiment or pre-experimental design. Okay, there are different types of uh, design for each type, either true or uh, quasi or uh, pre-experimental design. Here, here are different types of uh, pre-experimental design. Here is what they call one-shot case study. This is the name of the design. You can just uh, write down this. Is, this is the familiar terms in, uh, in, an, in an experiment. So when you say one-shot case study, we already understand that. You can symbolize your design as this, X and O. X means treatment, and O means is the observation or the measurement of the result. And here there is no pretest, but then you can also have a uh, one group pretest post test design. So you have pretest, and then you deliver the uh, the treatment, and then you measure again the result of your treatment, and you call it post test. So you call it one group pretest post test design. Sometimes uh, pre experimental design also have some kind of comparison group. They call it static group comparison. So you, you try to teach two uh, group using two different type of treatment, X1 and X2, and then at the end, you measure the result, the post-test. So you have only post-test. There is no pre-test, but you have control group, a kind of uh, comparison group. We do not call it control group, we call it comparison group. Okay, so this is a different type of 
pre-experimental design. You can have uh, any of this, of course. If you have this, uh, there must be some caution about the threat to the internal validity, ancaman terhadap validitas internal. Uh, whether really the result of this post-test is caused by the treatment, uh, there are some threats to that. So you have to be very cautious about that. Now let's see uh, the next uh, design. The true experimental design. Here we have, uh, take a look at the symbol R, indicating as a true experimental design. <clears throat> The name of this design is pre-test, post-test control group design. Okay. Pre-test, post-test control design, meaning that the, there is a pre-test before you give the treatment, and then after the treatment, you uh, administer the post-test again. So they call it pre-test, post-test control group design. In some cases, there are no pre-tests. Okay. They call it post-test only control group design. Post-test only control design, meaning that you come to uh, the group and then you deliver your treatment. And at the end, after finishing the treatment for several times, then you observe the result or you measure the result. Uh, we call it post-test. So the name of this design is post-test only control group design. And then uh, another design is the combination of the two. <coughs> the combination of the two is called Solomon, Solomon for group comparison. Solomon is the name of the uh, expert who first start this, this design. So comparing the, the first design, if you see here, and the second one. Uh, the purpose of doing this is that the researcher is trying to minimize the threat to the internal validity. If you have a pretest, there might be some kind of carry over, you, you have already seen the test, you, uh, because the test is similar to the second one, to the post-test. So maybe uh, <coughs> you, you still remember the concept tested in the, in the test, in, in the instrument. So there is an effect on the, uh, there is a threat on the internal validity. That is why we have some kind of control here, underneath here. There are two groups that do not have any post uh, pretest. So this, the effect of pretest now is controlled by the second one. Because here, there is no pretest. So uh, it's a good uh, idea if you have four groups. But remember that uh, finally you have uh, more resources to uh, expand it because you have four groups. But this is a good one to control and to minimize the threat to internal validity. Next course I experiment. Okay, course I experiment uh, also has some design. The, the very common one, the most frequently used design is the non-equivalent control group design. So remember that you can put the symbol N in front of here, you know, non-equivalent control group design, the symbol N indicating as quasi-experimental design. So here we have two groups, the experimental group and the control group. This is the very common one for uh, quasi-experimental design. But you can also have some kind of time series design. So, uh, for example, every week you try to measure the groups or the students' uh, ability in the dependent variable. So you, you measure first, the second one, so one, maybe four weeks, and then you give the treatment. And then you uh, measure again the, the uh, first week after the treatment, second week after the treatment, and third week after the treatment, and fourth week after the treatment. We call it time series design. So you can compare now how the students develop before the treatment and after the treatment. So this is a, a good uh, design to control whether the treatment also has effect on the dependent variable. 
or we may have what we call the counterbalance design. <clears throat> there are three different treatments, uh, method one, method two, method three, X1, X3, X2. But then you have three groups. Each group will have, will have the three method with different order. So group one, after the measurement, the pretest, they will give one method A. And then the result is measured. And then they are given method two. And then it's measured again the result. And then finally they are given method three. And then the result is measured afterwards. But then the second group has a different order. Method three first, and then method one, and then method two. While group three is starting from method two to method three and method one. Uh, if you remember uh, what we discussed last week about the carryover effect. So which one is the best? If you want to uh, apply the three method, which order is best? Whether one, two, three, or three, one, two, or two, three, one. So depending on the result later, and then you can justify that the sequence should be one, two, 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 three, because that is the best result. Okay, so this is a, a while controlling the group, this is also controlling the method. They call it counterbalance design. Okay, and then uh, here we have only one independent variable and one dependent variable. So this is a very common design to uh, students. But then you may have you have what we call the factorial design. In factorial design, you have two independent variables and one dependent variable. For example, the effect of teaching strategy and gender, so teaching strategy and then gender on student achievement. Okay. Probably if you have uh, two different teaching strategy, the first teaching strategy may be uh, prefer and uh, have a good result on male students, while the second one may uh, have a good result for the uh, female students. So we have uh, two independent variables and only one dependent variable. Uh, this is another example. The effect of particular counseling technique and client's ethnicity. So the counseling technique and ethnicity is the independent variable. And then the success of treatment is the dependent variable. The effect of specific coaching approach and children in three age groups on the ability to perform certain physical text, tasks. So, uh, for example, group, uh, age group, there are three, for example, from uh, 6 to 9, 10 to 12, 13 to 15. And then you uh, treat them with the same uh, approach, same technique to uh, exercise their physical skill. And then finally, you measure the skill afterward. And then we'd like to see whether the coaching and the group age may uh, have different results. We call it the factorial design. Yeah. Actually, if you have factorial designs, you will have uh, more confidence in explaining the result of the uh, uh, variables, independent variable on the dependent variable. For example, we are talking about uh, the first example here, the effect of teaching strategy and gender. Uh, and then we will be able to explain whether the uh, teaching method is just the same. It doesn't matter whatever the sex of the, uh, the gender of our students, will, the result will be the same. Or the method may only be working better on male students or vice versa. Maybe the strategy may work better on female students. So this is a very good uh, design because you can have more detailed explanation and they call it, we can have, uh, we, can, we are able to explain that more variance, variance are involved in achieving the dependent variable. Okay. If uh, you are able to have factorial design, that means that the research will be, um, uh, will be better in the uh, sense that you, you will have, Uh, 
uh, you'll be able to explain the uh, overlap variance, uh, variance between the variables. So two independent variables and one dependent variable. And probably there is an interaction, okay? Uh, maybe if uh, we are talking about the teaching strategy, maybe the uh, method A is good for uh, male students and it's not good for female students. But then when talking about different dependent variable, maybe method A is better for female students than for male students. So there might be some kind of interaction. We can actually, uh, uh, we can have a graphic like this. Uh, yeah, this is only a kind of uh, an example of the result of your study when you have a factorial design. For example, you have uh, two independent variables. First is the time and setting. For example, uh, you are teaching inside the classroom inside the classroom and outside the classroom. And then you have hours, one hour and four hours. So the, there are two variables, the setting, we are teaching in the classroom or outside of the classroom. And the second variable is the length of the instruction, one hour or four hours. And then finally you uh, measure the result. This is on, on the, an example. For example, if out of the classroom for an hour, the mean score of the group is five, is five. <clears throat> and if out of the classroom and the duration is four hours, the mean score is seven and the total is six. So the effect of out of classroom, regardless of the hours is six. And including uh, in the classroom is the same. So that means that uh, there is no main effect of the setting. Wherever you are doing the instruction, the result is quite the same, sick and sick, inside or outside. But then if you are talking about the time, maybe one hour is, is not good, either in the classroom or out of the classroom, meaning that there is a main effect of time. So four hours is better, whether outside or inside the classroom, because the mean score is higher, much like higher here. When uh, we do this, we can test the hypothesis statistically to find out whether the difference is significant or not. Okay, so this is only an example of uh, factorial design. Uh, there, there might be uh, what is a different type of result. The result may look like this, or may look like this or maybe in different uh, way like this, okay. Or there might be an interaction, something like this. So for the uh, one hour is, but the, the four hours is something like this, so, okay. Okay, so the, that's what we call the interaction. So uh, it is, uh, it, it is called uh, interaction when you see like this. When it is out of, out of the classroom, out, outside the classroom, the one hour is very good outside, but in the uh, four hour is not good, only five and seven, you see? So meaning that if you do outside of classroom, of course, uh, one hour is better. But if it is inside of the classroom, one hour is, is not favorable. Four hours is better. So it, this is what we mean by interaction. So one hour is good for outside and four hours is good for inside. Inside of the classroom is, uh, uh, inside is four hours is better. But outside, one hour is better. So that's what they call uh, interaction. So the same as when you are looking at whether the interaction is about the time. So regardless of the uh, uh, setting outside or inside the classroom, you see that one hour is one hour is uh, not good. Yeah, whether inside or outside, and uh, what is four hour is better. Uh, four hour is uh, no no four hour. 
when it is outside, outside four hour is not good. Okay, one hour is not good when it is inside of classroom. So four hour is better. Okay, but then on the other hand, for four hours when it is inside the classroom is better than one hour. So this is interaction when we are looking about the time. Here we are looking at the setting. So the same result. Okay, uh, uh, this is only a kind of uh, insight about designing your experiment. If you are doing an experiment and you have factorial design, maybe you can have more explanation about the causal relationship between the variables because, because you have two independent variables and one dependent variable. Okay, I believe that uh, this is the last issue that I'd like to explain to you. Now, if you have any comment or questions about the design. So once again, we have uh, pre-experimental design, quasi experimental design and through experimental design. Can you differentiate between the two design? What is the difference between the, the three design, the true experiment, quasi experiment and the pre-experiment? Arnanda, can you answer that? How can you differentiate the three design through experiment, quasi experiment, and pre experiment? Sulistina, so maybe can help Fernanda. What is the characteristic of true experiment which is not found in quasi experiment? Bella, Bella, Bella. Yeah, take a look at this. Uh, what is the difference between the, the three design? Maybe here is the true experiment. This is the quasi experiment, and here is the pre experiment. Look at the uh, indicators or the the, uh, the symbol here. So what differentiate the true experiment and quasi? The symbol here, what does it mean? R, which is not found in quasi experiment. Okay, ada yang bisa menjawab? Do we? Ini lain membedakan ketiganya. Jadi Anda harus bisa menjelaskan ini. Yang membedakan true dengan quasi dengan pre experiment. Kalau uh, kalau eksperimen ciri true eksperimen itu true eksperimen. Cirinya ini R ini apa artinya R ini tadi? Masih ingat? Randomly assigned into group. Prof. Very good, ya. Yeah. Ada dua random randomnya itu, random selection dengan random assignment ya yeah. randomly selecting from the population and then the individual is randomly assigned to group and then the group is randomly assigned to treatment so which one is going to have the experimental treatment and which one is going to have the control treatment so that means the r is there and that is the indication indicators of true experiment 
which is not found in true uh, quasi-experiment. In quasi-experiment, there is no randomization. There is no random selection and random assignment. So the existing group is available and we only select the existing group, okay? So that means that the individual in, this, in the existing group is not randomly assigned to that group. So there is no random assignment. So that means that it is a quasi-experiment. The characteristic of quasi-experiment is there is always a control group, okay? So there is always two groups at least. While in the pre-experimental, there is no control group, okay? There's only one group. We can have two groups and they call it static comparison, yeah? If you remember the stat I mean, static uh, group comparison. You have two groups, but we don't call it the control group, we call it uh, static comparison group. So the difference between the quasi and pre-experiment is that the number of group. In uh, pre-experiment, there is no control group. Uh, and in the uh, also uh, in the experimental design, uh, in the static group comparison, there is no pretest. Okay, there is no pretest. While in the uh, quasi experiment, there is always pretest. Okay, remember the 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 characteristic of these three types of experiment. True experiment, quasi experiment, and pre experiment. And then the name of this uh, design, you have to uh, remember this. When you see this X and O, that means a one shot case study. One shot case study. Or if you have O, X, O, observation, treatment, observation, then we have what we call one group pre test, post test design. If you have two groups with X1O, X2O, that means you have a static group comparison. So the name is very important to, to know because when you, you, you are writing up the method in your proposal and then you have to uh, use this terminology, whether you have one short case study, one group with test of design or static group comparison, or you have the, uh, which are the non-equivalent uh, non-equivalent pre-test, post-test experiment. That's for the quasi-experiment. Uh, quasi, uh, now, in the true experiment, you have uh, three types, three types of design, uh, pre-test, post-test control group design, and post-test only control group design. So there is no pre-test. There are two groups, and there is an R in front of this, and the Solomon pro group design. Solomon for group design. So there are three types of experimental design. Pre-test, post-test control group design. There is a pre-test and there is post-test. And then uh, there is a control group. Or only post-test. And they call it post-test only control group design. And the combination of the two, they call it Solomon for group comparison. And for the quasi-experiment, we have all these also three types, I remember this, so there are three types, non-equivalent control group design, the very common one, and time series design, time series design, and counterbalance design. So you have to be able to remember this and to draw the symbols for each of the type. When we say uh, non-equivalent control group design, it means that O, X, O, O, O. So this is the symbol for non-equivalent control design. Time series design is you have uh, at least four times observation before you give the treatment, and then you will uh, periodically observe after the treatment the same number of observation in the beginning, before the treatment and after the treatment, four times before and four times after the treatment. Or you have what you call counterbalance design. You have different type of treatment, X1, X2, F3. And then you have three group, but the order of the treatment is different. The order of treatment is different. Uh, group one will have uh, X1, X2, F3. 
and then group two will have different order and group C will have even different order of treatment. Okay. And then at last uh, we have what we call the factorial designs. What is the characteristic of factorial designs? Nur Elmi. What is the characteristic of factorial design? Yeah, at least you have to uh, remember that in a factorial design, we have two independent variables and one dependent variables. Two independent variables and one dependent variables. Yeah, we can have uh, our example just now. Uh, you may have the place of teaching in the classroom or outside of the classroom and the duration of teaching, one hour or four hours. So there are two independent variables. Whether the setting, the place where you teach, have some effect on the result of the uh, learning or the achievement or the length of instruction, one hour or four hours. Okay, so two independent variable, one dependent variable. The, de the dependent variable is the achievement or the learning. And then we may have different results. Uh, there are two types of uh, results that we can examine. The first one, what you call main effect. So remember this main effect. Main effect of the independent variable, main effect of time, and main effect of setting. In our example, uh, there are two independent variables, the place of instruction inside the classroom or outside of the classroom. We're looking for, we're looking for the effect of this setting. We call it main effect. Main effect of independent variable one and main effect of independent variable two. Whether time, uh, duration, uh, how, how long the instruction is, one hour or four hours, or the place of instruction inside the classroom or outside the classroom. This, that's the first one, to find out the main effect. The second one is uh, to look for the interaction, interaction, whether the duration, the length of time, is good in the classroom, better in the classroom, or outside the classroom. That is what we call interaction. Okay. So that is the characteristic of factorial design. Two independent variable and one dependent variable. The purpose is to find out the main effect of the independent variable and to find out the interaction, or whether there is an interaction between the two variables. Is it clear? Okay, if there is some of my explanation which is unclear or confusing, you may uh, raise your hand. You may ask questions or comments on that. It's okay. Uh, if so, then uh, you, you will have some kind of quiz on this uh, was I, uh, causal comparative and experimental research. Yes, uh, maybe next week you will have this uh, after the bar. Okay, now is the last call for comments or questions. <laughs> yeah, it seems uh, clear. <laughs> uh, it's really unclear, so there is nothing to ask because nothing you understand. <laughs> uh, 
Okay, so I, I would like to remind you once again what we, what we discussed uh, this uh, this morning about the experimental design. Uh, we have three different types of uh, experimental design. And then you have to uh, remember that the characteristic of an experiment is the assisting of treatment. Okay. The assisting of, there is a treatment in the group. Uh, the treatment is manipulated by the researcher. The treatment is also called independent variable. So remember that. So if there is no treatment, the result is not an experiment. Okay. Uh, if the independent variable is not manipulated by the researcher, that means that the research is not an experiment. When the treatment or the independent variable is manipulated by the researchers, that belongs to experimental research. But then, depending on the characteristic that we have discussed just now, the three types of experiment, the pre-experiment, quasi-experiment, and true experiment, you have to be able to differentiate between the three. You have to be able to uh, look for the uh, characteristic of the true experiment, quasi-experiment, and pre-experiment. And then we have also discussed about the factorial design. It, it is an experiment in which you have two independent variables and one dependent variable. The purpose of factorial design is to find out the main effects of the independent variable on the dependent variable and to find out whether there is an interaction between the two independent variable or the dependent variable. So that is the purpose of factorial design. So that is basically what discuss uh, is the summary of uh, what we discussed this morning. Okay, if there is no comments or questions, then we will dismiss the class. If you need the recording, I will put it in the group. Excuse me, bro. Yeah, yes, please. Yes, Lakan. Um, uh, Permisi, bro. Karena jaringan saya yang uh, kurang stabil dari tadi, mungkin uh, saya juga tidak terlalu jelas dengarnya Prof, apakah uh, sudah dibahas atau belum. Uh, tapi uh, seperti yang diketahui bahwa uh, dalam penelitian eksperim, apa, desain eksperimen ini uh, terdapat dua, dua jenis eksperimen, yaitu pre-eksperimen dengan quasi-eksperimen. Betul ya Prof? Tiga, tiga. Ada pre oh, ada tiga. Ya. Uh, kuasai ya. ada tiga ya di pre eksperimen kuasai eksperimen dan true eksperimen ada tiga ya. dengan cirinya masing-masing ya anda harus tahu cirinya ya uh, kalau true eksperimen itu cirinya uh, adalah, apa saja cirinya kalau true eksperimen True eksperimen uh, dia lebih uh, dia uh, apa penelitiannya tuh lebih ke sosial humanior prof. Nah, nah tidak ada hubungannya itu bukan bukan. Kirinya kirinya kalau true eksperimen itu dilihat dari segi subjek yang diteliti prosesnya itu. Jadi kalau subjek yang diteliti itu tidak diacak jadi dari populasi diacak ke sampel, kemudian sampel itu diacak ke dalam kelompok, dan kelompok itu diacak kepada treatment. Yang namanya itu random assignment, yaitu individu yang sudah dipilih dari populasi diacak untuk dikelompokkan. Mana yang masuk kelompok satu, mana yang masuk kelompok dua. Itu diacak, namanya random assignment. Kemudian kelompok A dan kelompok B yang sudah ada itu, diacak siapa yang akan mendapatkan metode A, siapa yang akan mendapatkan metode B, atau siapa yang akan menjadi kelompok eksperimen, mana menjadi kelompok kontrol. Itu diacak namanya random assignment. 
Sementara pemilihan dari populasi ke sampel dari 500 orang dipilih 80 orang itu namanya random selection. Ya. Jadi itu bisa kalau tidak di random itu maka tidak bisa dianggap sebagai true experiment. Itu ciri utamanya true experiment. Oke. Okay. Ya, nanti saya kirimkan videonya supaya bisa dilihat kembali ya. Jadi kalau kuasi eksperimen dia uh, tidak ada pengacakan di situ. Betul. Jadi kalau kuasi eksperimen itu pada umumnya kelompok atau kelas yang kita ajar itu sudah ada memang kelas uh, 2A, 2B, 2C kita memilih kelasnya saja diacak juga kelasnya. Tapi anak yang ada dalamnya kan tidak diacak masuk di situ. Itu tidak ada random assignment. Jadi kelas itu sudah ada di sekolah, kita sudah mengacak kelas yang kita kenal dengan cluster random sampling teknik. Kita akhirnya memilih yang terpilih itu kelas 2B dan kelas 2C misalnya. Itu jadikan sebagai sampel eksperimen kita. Tapi tetap bisa tidak bisa dianggap sebagai true eksperimen karena anak yang ada dalam kelas itu tidak diacak. Oke, okay? sudah ada memang di dalam. Nah, itu sehingga jadikan dia sebagai kuasai eksperimen. Okay. Dan kuasai eksperimen selalu dua kelompok, ada kelas kontrol. Makanya disebut dengan non-equivalent control group design. Non-equivalent pre-test, post-test control group design. Mengapa disebut non-equivalent? Equivalent setara, tidak setara karena anak yang ada dalamnya tidak diacak. Kita tidak tahu apakah di kelas 2A itu lebih bagus daripada kelas 2B, kita tidak tahu. Makanya disebut non-equivalent. Karena tidak adanya pengacakan dari selection and then assignment. Jadi pemilihan dari 500-an anak di populasi itu menjadi 80 itu tidak diacak. Makanya disebut non-equivalent. Oke? Okay? Oh ya, baik, Prof. Terima kasih, Prof. Oke. Okay. Anyone else? Or, or you can you can watch the video later. I would like to uh, attach the attach the video into the group so you can see the part one what we discussed last week and what we discussed today. There are two videos from this. Okay, uh, and then uh, review the videos. Uh, you may read details from the textbook. Because next week uh, I, I I will try to uh, make up the quiz on causal comparative and experiment. So remember that there are two topics that will be on the quiz. Okay. Okay. If there is no questions any longer, I would like to dismiss the class. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, remember to review the videos and the textbook, please read the textbook again on this chapter, the uh, course of comparative research and the experimental research. And then uh, the quiz may be next week. Thank you very much. Uh, I'll see you next week, inshallah. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, I will I will end the meeting and then I will process the YouTube so you can watch it later. Thank you. Bye bye.